through the cover sheet tab training. The learning objectives for this module are observe how to resize data sections on the cover sheet, observe the steps to enter a patient allergy, and observe how to display detailed patient information from the cover sheet. Let's begin. The cover sheet is the first tab in the patient's electronic health record. The cover sheet is divided up into data sections. All the information found on the cover sheet can be found elsewhere in CPRS. Before we explore what can be found on the cover sheet, let's look at the basic setup of CPRS. In the bottom left-hand corner, you'll notice the different tabs that are contained in CPRS. The tabs available include the cover sheet, problems, meds, orders, notes, consults, surgery, discharge summary, labs, and reports tab. To navigate to another tab, you will single click on the tab. In the top left hand corner of the CPRS window, you will see several menu options including File, Edit, View, Tools, and the Help menus. Below those menus is the CPRS informational header that contains numerous buttons including the patient identification, patient location button, and so on. The menus and CPRS informational header will be discussed in the next modules. For now, we will focus on the information contained with the cover sheet. The default data sections included on the cover sheet consist of active problems, allergies, patient record flags, the postings, active medications, clinical reminders, recent labs, vitals, and the patient appointments, visits, and admissions. Some medical centers may have swapped out one of the default sections and replaced it with a listing of recent immunizations. Even though we maximized our screen in CPRS, you'll notice that some of the data sections are difficult to view. Your first time into CPRS, you will need to resize your sections to optimize the display. For example, if I place my cursor on the recent lab results header bar, two horizontal lines in between two arrows appear. When this icon is displayed, you can hold down your left click on your mouse and drag the header up or down to customize your display. You can do the same with the vertical dividers on the cover sheet. Again, I will place my cursor on the vertical divider. When I see the two vertical lines in between two arrows, I can hold down the left click on my mouse and drag the divider to the left or to the right. CPRS will remember your settings, so the next time you log in, the dividers will remain where you have set them. Now that we have optimized our cover sheet display, let's take a closer look at the information contained on the cover sheet. We will start with the active problems located in the upper left-hand corner. The active problem list on the cover sheet will display SNOMED codes that were added to the patient's record. Providers have the ability to link the SNOMED codes to active ICD-10 codes. If you single click on a problem, it will bring up more detailed information. I will click on the Diabetes SNOMED code to bring up more information. A new window appears where we will see the linked ICD-10 code, the onset, the status, if it is service-connected condition, the provider who entered the information when it was recorded, and we can see all of the changes that occurred to this problem. Click the close button in the lower right-hand corner or the X in the upper right-hand corner to exit out of this window. To the right of the active problem list is the allergies adverse reaction list. Again, if you click on an allergy, additional information is displayed. I will click on penicillin. Notice at the bottom of the window there is an add new button which will allow you to add a new allergy to a patient's chart and there is an entered in error button which will allow you to enter a selected allergy in error and remove it from the display. Based upon your role at the facility, these buttons may be activated for you to use. You also have a print button and a close button. 
I will click on the close button to exit. If you right click in the allergy adverse reaction section, you will see this is another way to get to the options to enter a new allergy or to enter an existing allergy in error. The right click option also has the ability to mark the patient as having no known allergies. The mark patient as having no known allergies is only active when there are not any allergies listed. Since this patient has listed allergies to penicillin and chocolate, this option is grayed out for me. Next I will demonstrate how to enter a new allergy. I will click on the Enter New Allergy button. In the causative agent lookup window, I will type codeine in the search for prompt and click the search button. I get a list of codeine options available for selection. I will single click on the first codeine option under the national drug file and click OK. The originator and origination date is always populated. I will need to select either observed allergy, meaning I observed the reaction, or historical, meaning the patient reports having the allergy. For this example, I will select historical. Next, I will need to enter the nature of reaction. Clicking on the down arrow to the right of the prompt reveals the list I can choose from, and I will select allergy. The signs and symptoms box is populated with a top 10 list of the most common symptoms that is defined by your site. If you scroll past the top 10 list, you will see hundreds of potential symptoms. You can select from the list or you can type in a reaction at the prompt and let CPRS search the list. For this example, I will type the letters C-O-N-F and notice CPRS will jump to confusion in the signs symptoms list. I will double click on confusion in the list to add it to the selected symptoms window. The comment section is optional and we will not be adding anything there. Now that I've entered all the information, I can click OK to add the new allergy. Codeine is now added as an allergy on our list. To the right of the allergies is the list of active patient record flags. If you single click on a PRF name, it will display the flag information that we had seen in the past module. Directly below the patient record flag list is the posting information. The posting information displays if the patient has known allergies, if there are any crisis notes, clinical warning notes, or advanced directive information. The posting area is meant to display important information and make it easy to find. As you may have guessed, single clicking on a posting will bring up additional information. When I click on the advanced directive completed May 16, 2007, I will see the text of the progress note. And in this example, the advanced directive has been scanned into the system. We will discuss how to view scanned documents in the Vista Imaging Display module. I will click the close button to exit. In the middle left hand side of your cover sheet you will see active medications. If you single click on the medication you will get all the details of the order such as text of the order, who ordered the medication, when it was ordered, and so on. I will click on furosemide for example. And there on the screen you will see all the detailed information related to this one order. I will click close to exit out. To the right of the active medication list is the clinical reminder list. The clinical reminders are set up either locally or at the national level and will alert the clinician of screening, testing, or other clinical intervention that needs to be completed on the patient based upon patient's age, gender, previous diagnoses, or other defined cohorts. I will single click on the TBI screening clinical reminder and I will get more information as to why this clinical reminder is due. I can see this clinical reminder is due every 99 years, which basically means it's due once in a lifetime for patients, and it's due for patients who served in combat in either Iraq or Afghanistan. Clinical reminders cannot be satisfied or completed from the cover sheet. We will learn how to complete them as part of the progress note module. 
In the lower left-hand corner of the cover sheet, we have recent lab results, and as you guessed it, if you single-click on a lab, the results will display. Next to the labs, we have the most recent set of vital signs for the patient. If you single-click on a vital measurement, you will get additional information. I will click on temperature. In the vitals light window, we now see a graph of the patient's temperature reading and at the bottom of the window, all vital measurement data recorded during the selected time frame are displayed. In the upper left hand corner of the window, under the patient's name, you will see that there is a list of selectable date ranges that we can use to either expand or limit our current view. Under the date range, we have the ability to further customize our graph by toggling on and off the values, the time scale, 3D view, or zoom ability. If you want to change what is graphed, you can simply click on another vital measurement in the list on the left hand side. In the upper right hand corner of the vital slight window, you have the option entered in error to enter selected measurements in error, and also a button to enter new vital signs. There is also an allergy button where you can again get a list of the documented allergies on your patient. I will click on the X up in the right hand corner to exit out of this window. The last section on the cover sheet is the appointments visit admission section. You will see a list of patient appointments. It will display future appointments as well as past appointments. If you click on a past appointment that is listed as checked out, the progress note associated with that visit will display. That takes us to the end of the cover sheet tab. In summary, you learned how to enter a patient allergy, how to resize data sections, and how to display detailed patient information from the cover sheet. That concludes the cover sheet training module.